All right, we should be live. I'm going to just mess around for a minute, wait for everybody to get in, make sure we're live. And I'm here with my friend, Wakas Khan. What's going on, Wakas? Uh, hey, Anomaly, how are you doing? It's so nice to catch up again. Absolutely. It's, a, it's always a blessing. Hold on. I had it on. That's why we do that for a minute. I had it on my YouTube channel, and mm -hmm. then it was like delayed. So I was like, I had two audios at once, but oh, okay. we should be live. We got people in. We'll start it up. What's going okay. on, everybody? I'm here with Wakas Khan. This is another episode of Make America Debate Again. I saw Wakas first at Politicon two years ago. I think it was two years ago now. I lose track of time. Life flies. Time flies. Yeah, July 2017. So July yeah. 2017, almost two years ago, a year and a half. And Wakas asked uh, an amazing question. Honestly, one of the only good questions. Everyone else was just talking for like 10 minutes and they, they weren't making sense. And you had a really good uh, message and question for Ben. So we connected. I'm proud to say it's my friend now. And he has a really interesting story. So first off, Wakas, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, uh, Anomaly, for inviting me. It's such an honor. I am so glad to see that uh, you are growing very well and then you are expanding uh, because uh, it seems like finally a lot of people with common sense are tuning into and they want to listen to your message and they want to see people debate and uh, discuss opinions and uh, hold their own opinions and see if they can have a pretty good uh, uh, pretty, pretty good uh, conflict of ideas and sharing of ideas and, and let the best idea win. So I really love that topic, that, uh, the title, which is like Make America Debate Again. And I think it's extremely important that we all from different aisles uh, uh, of like political aisles, uh, they come together and then start debating. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a really interesting story. I mention it quite frequently because I kind of just free flow through life and we talk a lot. I have other friends. And when I hear these stories, especially about immigrants, since the news claims to care so much about immigrants, I'm always sharing them because I was like, all these things I hear on the news, I don't see them anywhere. I talk to people from this background, that background, like they're the ones virtue signaling. We love these people so much more than Anomaly. Mm -hmm. But those stories never get told. So why don't you mm -hmm. let people know your story? Because you are now an American citizen, but a Pakistani immigrant who mm -hmm. did it the legal way. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so I'm originally from Pakistan. I was born and raised in Lahore, Pakistan. And I came to U.S. Um, for the first time, I believe, in 2004 uh, to take my uh, exam. And then after that, I came uh, back in 2005. Uh, to take my exam and interviews and in 2006 I got my H1B working visa and then uh, the working I was on H1B for almost four years the working visa then I had to be on green card for almost five years and then eventually uh, I got my citizenship in February 2017 I believe so it took me almost 11 to 12 years to become uh, the, uh, to become the American citizen in the legal way so it was a pretty hard gruesome experience because we had to really follow each and every rule and law uh, in the book. We, it, was, it was an extremely expensive process. It was an extremely wait, uh, long wait, uh, waiting process. So, I mean, it just it blows my mind to see people uh, supporting some, uh, somehow like the illegal immigration and that they don't even want to differentiate and make a distinction between legal immigration and illegal immigration, which are just totally different two things. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the craziest part, because I always say on my channel, I understand if you want to make an intelligent debate for why you love illegal immigration, like I, people are allowed free speech, you're allowed to make mm -hmm. your case. But the fact that they can conflate illegal immigrants with legal immigrants, and then all of the, you mm -hmm. know, left wing celebrities and stuff, they say, Oh, you hate immigrants, we're not going to have a, a population if we have no immigrants. And we're like, mm -hmm. no, no one said we don't like immigrants. It, and there's a difference. But that it's a really sick tactic that they have to pretend like mm -hmm. they don't know the difference, especially, you know, for someone like you, that it took almost 12 years to get here. Absolutely. It's like actually outrageous, offensive, disgusting, and totally racist of these left leaning celebrities or elites. Basically, I'm not blaming all of them, but a lot of them, a significant proportion of them who are, I believe, truly racist from the core because they do not treat different races. Similarly, they treat different people differently. They don't give a damn about the legal immigrants. They just want to bring all of these uh, illegals, regardless of their criminal background or uh, what they are for, who, where have they come from? And they do not understand that the legal immigrants have to go, go through all this process, a uh, very hard process. And they have to keep 
up, uh, keep all the law, uh, uh, they have to keep themselves clean from all sort of crime and uh, uh, follow all the laws. And then eventually they're able to achieve their goal of American dream of achieving an American citizenship. So this is not something which you can say a bed of roses for us and then we just come over here and immediately uh, get uh, get the privilege of American citizenship. It's a very hard process for us. So I really wanna put the blame where it belongs, like the to, to conflate legal immigration with illegal immigration is extremely offensive, outrageous and racist. And that's who these people are. And I'm gonna clean, uh, clear this up today in our debate today. Yeah, you, you've been saying that a lot and I never thought about it. I guess, you know, I've mentioned it here, there mm -hmm. in ways, but you're making the case that it's actually really racist because if you're, you know, say Mexican or maybe you came all the way up for Guatemala in the caravan mm -hmm. that MSNBC orchestrated mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. they let you in. But if you're a, a Pakistani or maybe you're from, you mm -hmm. know, one of, I, I guess maybe it, like South, Somali South Asia, South Asia or Africa, I mean, we're from or China, Southeast Asia, from any other region of the world, you have to come over here legally and you have to go through the legal process, you know, and then they talk about like the proximity, like somehow Mexico is just right around the border. Okay, Mexico is maybe, but Honduras is not, Nicaragua is not, El Salvador is not, Guatemala is not. They are at least 2000 miles away. And then they cross, they, they don't, didn't go to Venezuela, which is like the, uh, the, the liberal socialist utopia right now. I mean, they didn't go over there, they came over here and then they don't even wanna stop at Mexico. I mean, Mexico right now is in a pretty good shape and they even offered them, these people, uh, the, uh, the refugee status, the residential status, healthcare, education, everything. But they rejected that. They marched all the way to our border and they marched through that. They threw, threw projectiles on our, uh, uh, on our uh, law enforcement, brave law enforcement. With the, these liberals keep on thrashing. They, did, uh, they, uh, they insulted them. They actually harmed them, injured them. And and then uh, they want them to be coming over here like this. I mean, we don't even know who they are and who they claim to be. And on the other hand, the legal, legal immigrants like me, and not only me, like millions of millions, like overwhelming immigrants who come over here are legal. So they uh, have to come through all this gruesome process to able to prove who we are and who we are not. Yeah, it took you 12 years, a lot of money. You had to be someone of merit mm -hmm. that they could prove that you were gonna benefit mm -hmm. society in some way. And not only mm -hmm. do they let them come over here illegally, you know, mm -hmm. for, for free from thousands of miles away, but now mm -hmm. you, you have uh, Gavin Newsom talking about how we're going to pay for their health insurance. And it's like, come, it's like, at, at what point is it just a smack in the face? All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have to pay for their health insurance mm -hmm. after it took you 12 years and God knows how many thousands of dollars to get here. Mm -hmm. it, and absolutely. And that's what it is. Like Gavin Newsom is actually a socialist. I mean, he just needs to, He's not really openly saying that I'm a socialist, but uh, he is actually what it is. And then uh, you just need to look at the policies. I mean, you don't really have to look at uh, uh, if someone is really self avoiding uh, socialist, just like uh, Bernie Sanders or Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, or uh, someone who is not using the word, but actually following the same policy. So Gavin Newsom is a socialist and he is gonna basically uh, drive the state of California into this crap hole, which a socialist country eventually becomes and the Venezuela is the prime example so and then he does not care so, uh, so and he does not care if uh, he is allowing these uh, illegal immigrants with the criminal background and I'm not saying that all of them are like that I mean I okay fine uh, I mean I acknowledge like overwhelming majority of the uh, illegal immigrants coming from uh, uh, from anywhere is uh, are peace loving and they want to seek the American dream. But the way they are trying to seek the American dream is the wrong way. I mean, you cannot think of becoming a rich person and you want to start off by pickpocketing. You want to start off by robbing a bank. You want to start off by doing something other which is not legal. And that's how uh, that's how straightforward it is. It's just like have, giving someone morphine, which is a legal medication used in every hospital and clinic versus giving someone heroin, even a small one gram or milligram. You cannot make heroin and morphine look the same. So simple as that with legal and illegal immigration. So, and then we are not saying that we are not gonna, uh, uh, that we are against them to come over here to the border and even applying for asylum. We just want them to go through the proper legal channel, which is to go to the port of entry 
and uh, and then uh, declare who they are and then which family member they are with and then our law enforcement and then the legal immigration system will will figure it out if they really qualify for asylum or not all we want them is not to come through the border illegally because with them a lot of criminals uh, which are not really uh, constituting the majority of the illegals but a lot of criminals uh, and then the sex traffickers drug traffickers they uh, they end up uh, tagging along with them so it's, it's just a matter of control and secure immigration it's not the matter of having no immigration at all so that's just something which they conveniently don't want to admit and it's because they have their hidden agenda and then we can talk about that too like what is the ultimate goal for it? absolutely it, it's crazy because there's i read recently there's 52 million or around 52 million hispanic legal citizens and those mm -hmm. are among the people that are the most upset 52 mm -hmm. million that's not a small number you mm -hmm. came over from Pakistan. You're mm -hmm. upset. I talked to, I had a driver the other day from Iran and he was mm -hmm. like, I, lo I love this country. And he was mm -hmm. like, Tr Trump is right about Iran. He was like, I mm -hmm. can't see my father because of the travel ban. Mm -hmm. And you see a bunch of liberals who are, mm -hmm. you know, paler than a ghost. No, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter that they're super, but it's like, they're speaking mm -hmm. on behalf of races and ethnicities that they're not mm -hmm. even a part of. And mm -hmm. instead of like, I'm allowing you to speak, I'll allow other people, mm -hmm. to, they, they cut off that access. And then mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I'll speak for, for the Middle East. I'll speak for the Latinos. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know a single Hispanic person, honestly, out of like dozens mm -hmm. that agrees with you, even if they're not conservative, mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. not that they're not that dumb. Like they're oh, like, oh, I, you know, <laughs> absolutely. So that's the thing. Like I have talked to a lot of my friends from different backgrounds. They're Hispanic. They're Indian. They are uh, Middle Eastern. Uh, they are European. They are from like all over the world. And I have like an extremely diverse background of uh, friends and all of them, regardless of which political aisle they are, they keep on saying like that does not make sense that how can you discriminate against us? How can we show racist against us to make one race come one way and the, the, the other races come the other way so this is absolutely disgusting liberals i mean not all of them i need to keep on mentioning that like hashtag not all of them but yeah. a lot of them they are so racist they don't even uh they don't even realize that like how much racist they are towards especially the legal immigrants and actually they basically hate the legal immigrants and the main reason for them hating the legal immigrants is like they cannot control us so we come over here uh and then when i came over here from pakistan i saw like one party uh the democratic party dehumanizing uh, the Republican Party by uh, by co continuously saying that these are white supremacists, these are that supremacists, they are racist, biggest, and they are anti-immigrant. And then later on, when I was thank God finally able to uh, uh, to study it myself and and uh, put myself in a neutral position and was able to put myself in a better vintage point as a neutral legal immigrant to see which party actually stands for what and what was their background and where have they and how. Uh, come they have come this far to be uh, the parties that they are today i realized that actually the the democratic party has always been the party of racism and has always been the party of bigotry and they are even up till now they're uh, only the tactics have changed but nothing else has changed they still thrive on racism and then their racism is so overt and it's so obvious but they are so blinded by that they cannot even see that and then what they try to do they they try to tell the legal immigrants like oh you are here because of us somehow i mean no you don't even give a damn about the legal immigrants you just care about the illegals as long as they come over here and vote for you and then the moment a legal immigrant turns against you and stop voting for you or start really bowing down in front of your liberal agenda you start hating him so much that you you can't even imagine so you, you, the words like like coon or uncle tom or uh, house and you know are, and then so now they have come up with these new words like uh, well like a muslim and and then the sand and and all that stuff you know like mm -hmm. these are the words being used by the liberals towards the conservative legal immigrants to shut them down because they are not being able to control them so as long as you're a immigrant who is under their control they are very happy with that as long as you are an immigrant on their plantation they are very happy with that but the moment you try to get out of their plantation and you say like okay you know what i don't want to fall onto this racist agenda of yours i want to I'm, I'm you cannot be judging me based on my religion ethnicity and color of my skin i can be my own man and let me decide who i want to go with that's the time when they turn against you that they, they turn against you in a very racist and hateful way and then you see 
articles coming out against these people. Like Candace Owen is one of the biggest examples. And then there are so many other colored, con colored conservatives out there. Dinesh D'Souza is another example. So they don't care about these people of the color of their skin. Immediately they turn against them. They start hating them. They start hating them uh, with the, their complete, uh, with their background and with their ethnicity with the color and on and they actually make fun of them of their color ethnicity and origin uh, they call them the race traitors and all this stuff and the thing is like we are not the race traitors we're just thinking for ourselves we're just thinking differently and that's what they cannot accept so absolutely the crazy thing to me about it is as i've grown older and i started seeing <clears throat> what they said you're not black enough you're not brown enough mm -hmm. they usually say it when somebody's well spoken pretty mm -hmm. educated articulate intelligent mm -hmm. So are you saying that black and brown people can't be intelligent or well-spoken or know the English language well? Like mm -hmm. I, I understand if someone doesn't, I tell sometimes conservatives, I'm like, don't, you don't know how smart that person, maybe they speak in a slang, but like mm -hmm. the fact that liberals and even like the, the black and rap community, they call mm -hmm. them, oh, you're not real. So what are you saying that being your color means not Mm -hmm. being like critical thinking that's not a good mm -hmm. way to be the, the democrats use that i wanted to take it back real quick at the beginning you're saying that mm -hmm. a lot of people that you know mm -hmm. even based on political party they feel that this immigration system is racist do you know people from the middle east that are immigrants that are maybe more left-leaning that are upset over this wall because even though maybe they support more liberal uh, mm -hmm. agenda sometimes they're like mm -hmm. wait a second it took me 10 years to get over here now mm -hmm. you're just gonna is that making a lot of people that you see turn against them or at least question them for the first time so there are different categories of people out there there are some which are completely brainwashed i mean they are just and then they just hate trump so much and then they're so much uh, uh, affected by the trump derangement syndrome that they don't even care anymore so they are like okay as long as we can bash trump and look him make him look bad even if he discovers the cure of cancer and then he fixes every, each and every problem in the world we just hate him and we and we hate him fixing the problems of the world so that's those people you cannot even argue and and it blows my mind to see that those people are actually in almost every uh, aspect of life so they can be ranging from all the way from like housekeeping to like truck drivers and to uh uh, very well educated doctors, uh, physicians, dentists, engineers, and vice versa as well. Like you, you will be seeing uh, people from all aspects of life making so much sense who are saying like, okay, yeah, we could be from the other side of the political aisle, but we do understand that these are the racist policies in which you cannot just keep on accepting one race based on their, uh, their ethnicity and uh, their illegal immigration status because they keep on voting for the Democrats. And it's very discriminatory and racist and outrageous and, outrageous and offensive to those legal immigrants who spend so much time and money to come over here. Uh, like, I'm gonna talk to you, to you later about my family situation as well, like what I'm going through right now, and not only, only me, millions of legal immigrants who are going through that process and how hard it is for us to be with our families. And we are separated from our families too. You know, you know just it's not just those people who have made the choice to come 2,000 miles and were offered uh, the refugee status and all the, uh, all the help in the way and rejected that and, and decided to come all the way to the border. It's us who came over here legally and still have not been able to bring our family members over here. And it's extremely hard and tough for us. And we have as bad scenarios in, in, um, in from the countries that we have come from. Like we have minorities that are being oppressed. We have people who are uh, uh, victims of violence. We have people who are uh, economic refugees who are looking for uh, good jobs and good opportunities. And we have uh, people who are from the middle class. We have people from the upper class. We have all sort of people over there, but overwhelming majority of us from there, they come as legal immigrants. And then I wanna make another point right now while talking about the legal and illegal immigrants, like uh, they say oh, 40% uh, percent of the uh, people who come over here, they come here, uh, sorry, 40% of the uh, illegals over here, they are the ones who are overstaying their visas. So first of all, let me tell you one thing which is very uh, clear. Uh, and then which is that like, whenever you come over here, as your, even as your first visit, you have to go through extreme vetting and scrutiny finger uh, finger uh, printing background checkup uh, security clearance and everything and then they let you come over here even just one time 
Now I am not for those people who overstay their visa and become illegal. And I don't care from whichever ethnicity, origin, or race they're from, even if they're from my ethnicity or my country or even from my hometown. I want them to follow the law, rules, and regulations. And if they cannot, then I want them to be out of here because that really looks bad on our community and all the legal immigrants. And the, the only way they can they can manipulate their data is when they keep on conflating the legal and Im illegal immigrants together. So we, uh, we want to make a very clear distinction. So those 40% of people who come over here and overstay on their visas, they are still at least once properly vetted and have gone through the proper security checkup. And it's very easy to find them because we have their name, we have their lease, the location which they were where they were supposed to go, and then we can track them. Those people who come illegally from the border and they just cross the border, uh, we have absolutely no idea idea what their name is what their age is where they are from what was their background at all and they are that's why again not all okay not all but a lot of them are far more dangerous compared to those people who come over here uh, legally first and then overstay their visa and become illegal and i still do not want them to be here illegally at all regardless of their race religion ethnicity and that does that shows my attitude towards every race to be equal including my own race compared mm -hmm. to those racist liberals out there who want to treat one race differently and the other differently. No, you're so right with with Hispanics. First of all, I'm part Hispanic. Half my family is 100% Hispanic. My parents mm -hmm. separated. I have stepfather and such. But, uh, you know, it, it has nothing. They always play the race card, but it's like, listen, there's a difference, mm -hmm. illegal and legal. And mm -hmm. you made a really great point. It actually looks bad. Like Hispanics in America have been fine. But if you mm -hmm. let in 10, 5, 20, 30 million. Now you're making all, all the other Hispanics look mm -hmm. bad. Same mm -hmm. with from the Middle East, you know, mm -hmm. even with the crisis going on in Europe now and, mm -hmm. and the fact that when there's a big vetting process that people follow the law, you get mm -hmm. people who are not only the best of the best, but also that like like you said, you mm -hmm. want to follow the law completely. If you mm -hmm. let in a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand that don't have to follow the process that you followed, mm -hmm. now it's it's weighing on your own community because mm -hmm. now you have a bad look. And you're someone who's, I, I, I won't say rare, but maybe to a lot of people who don't, you know, get out there a lot where it's mm -hmm. like, you're more than happy to speak out against that mm -hmm. because it's not like something that you're trying to hide mm -hmm. or say like, oh, it's not a problem. You're like, no, mm -hmm. it, it is a problem. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's making my life harder. The mm -hmm. fact that they're doing all this stuff from mm -hmm. border to even how mm -hmm. the liberals say in the Middle East, like, mm -hmm. no, we shouldn't vet and we should just bring over a hundred thousand mm -hmm. people. Like, why? That's not gonna mm -hmm. help you or, all my friends from mm -hmm. the Middle East, that's going to make life for any good American. It's like a good and bad, like you follow the law mm -hmm. or you don't. You're mm -hmm. you're a decent mm -hmm. person or yeah. you're a total piece of trash and you mm -hmm. have no concept of like mm -hmm. what makes a society function. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. So that's the thing. Like if you talk about bringing people from Middle East in extreme crisis, like the Syrian refugees. So I am definitely for bringing refugees uh, from any part of the world. Okay. Again, that's my whole point. I am willing to bring people from any part of the world regardless of their ethnicity race and origin and then give everybody the equal opportunity and go make them go through the same process as everyone else has gone through not like to have a special treatment for few people and then special treatment for the overwhelming majority, uh, majority of the other people so that actually really makes it extremely racist so now these people let's suppose from syria they you know how long it takes for them to come over here it takes them mu multiple years to go through the all vetting and and, and screening and uh, uh, the background checkup processing uh, but again, I do not want like droves after droves of the Syrian refugees to come over here. We should have like control and secure immigration and policy towards the refugees uh, from any part of the world. And then that is so important because if we bring Syrian refugees, which are, uh, I'm very sure, are very nice people, very great people, but unfortunately, they do have some bad elements in them. So we don't want that bad elements to come along with them, tagging along with them, and then making them look bad because that will make their life difficult over here. And once we bring them in a very controlled and secure way, they can come over here and thrive like every other community uh, that has been able to do so. So uh, the, the way that, uh, that things need to be done is just based on security. I'm just pro-security and uh, pro-control immigration just to know who we are letting in. Otherwise, I don't care where have they, been, uh, where have they come from. 
Absolutely. You, you brought up a pr- point I bring a lot. They identify mm-hmm. that there's a problem in Mexico and in mm-hmm. Syria and the Middle East because mm-hmm. people are fleeing. They're saying, no, they, you can't not let them come. Mm-hmm. They're escaping this, 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 and mm-hmm. this. And like you said, well, isn't it basic common sense and decency that you don't bring this, 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 and this mm-hmm. there with them? Because that's what mm-hmm. they're escaping. So if you bring mm-hmm. the bad parts of Mexico and South mm-hmm. America and the bad parts of the Middle East, along mm-hmm. with it because you're like i hate everyone who doesn't agree with me and i don't want to think about this stuff you're not actually helping not only mm-hmm. is it racist in certain ways where certain mm-hmm. people get privileges and other people don't but it's also just like it's like every everything wrong it's the opposite mm-hmm. of how to mm-hmm. do things properly no so actually that's why i keep on bringing because like i keep on hearing this nonsense argument that uh, uh, the reason that uh, conservatives they don't want uh, illegals to come over here because of the freaking white supremacy or they are just like racist and then the wall is racist and they're like somehow the some like a structure of concrete or steel is racist and the symbol <laughs> of racism which is so dumb because that's the structure that you have around your house and around your every institution so probably you're racist too because like you have the same thing around every other institution that you have in your home so the main thing is like the liberals they just hate the legal immigrants, they are extremely racist towards the legal immigrants. And I have an extremely prime example to quote over here. Right now, you heard that in uh, California, this uh, brown Indian guy from Fiji, his last name is Singh, police officer who came over here legally, who went almost through the same process as me or any other uh, millions of legal immigrants, learned English, uh, applied for the job, became a police officer, uh, living his American dream, having a night, a very beautiful young wife with a five month old kid got shot by an illegal immigrant. Now who happened to be Hispanic, that's another thing, but an illegal immigrant, that's the key point, an illegal immigrant. So basically an illegal immigrant took away the life of a legal immigrant who came over here the right way. Now you would expect that you may hear at least two words of sympathy to empathize and sympathize with his family from these liberal democrats leadership you didn't hear a single word coming out of them you know i mean you can just say like i am extremely sorry for this person's loss and i hope that would have never happened and then this is not what i stand for that i don't stand for the criminal legal uh, cr- criminal illegals coming over here because that guy had two duis and he was a gang member and he would have he should have been deported from uh, this country long time ago and that was ex- totally preventable which was not prevented and that en- ended up taking away the life of this innocent legal immigrant no liberal leader came out and said even two words of sympathy because they know that that defeats their narrative and they that uh, that really sh- shows that people who are coming here legally they are the protectors of the society they uh, join the they join the police force and they protect the other Americans regardless of their race, religion, and ethnicity. And on the other hand, these illegals come over here and they kill a legal immigrant. That destroys their narrative. So if you're not able to have an, any two words of sympathy for uh, this uh, brown Indian Fiji guy who was a legal immigrant, and you are still going for illegal immigrants who even who have uh, c- criminal backgrounds and are being protected by the sanctuary laws of the state of California and of multiple other uh, uh, cities in there. So you are basically a racist because you, if it had been the other way around, that the same guy uh, who got shot, actually, police officer, had killed the illegal Hispanic immigrant. The whole world on the left side would have, like, collapsed that to them it was the end of the world and then how dare this police officer shot this illegal immigrant and then they would not have even gone down into detail about uh, was it uh, uh, committing a crime or something what were the circumstances or anything they would have just said police officer it just shot a legal immigrant that's part of it now and then they would have labeled that brown guy as a part of like somehow like racism and uh, white supremacy and all the nonsense so if, if you do not have two words of sympathy for, towards uh, a legal immigrant and you still sympathize with an illegal immigrant even though they have he has taken away the life and killed that person and left behind a young widow and five-month-old kid you are a freaking racist that's what you uh, are I, I hear you yeah and like yeah. you said he's a he's a brown guy where it's mm-hmm. like okay maybe if the guy was like a white a white conservative or something who killed him they, it would be all mm-hmm. over the news because then they mm-hmm. could play the race card 
Oh, I, even I, at this time, even at this time, since he's a police officer and then he was here legally, they would have used the same card. Like police somehow is racist towards uh, brown people or black people. They would have not even cared that the guy was himself brown and I, legal. Absolutely. I, I posted about the there was a young Hispanic girl and a young black police officer. Two got shot in, uh, you know, within like 48 hours in America. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, I, I posted it. I, I don't like to do tragedies too much, but I was mm -hmm. like, Maybe I could get through to the feminist crowd. They're they're gonna do a women's march in a week. You know, mm -hmm. two women mm -hmm. being strong. They always show the the, the female mm -hmm. strength. Like, what's stronger mm -hmm. than than protecting your uh you know country or your mm -hmm. community yep. and doing what a lot of men can do and a lot of women mm -hmm. can't do? They get shot. And someone actually posted on my status. They said mm -hmm. she got what she deserved. So mm -hmm. this is I'm not saying like you say it's not mm -hmm. all liberals, but the no. fact that they're saying she got what she deserved. I mean, you mm -hmm. don't you don't see that in a uh, the conservative community you might know not at all they might say that for someone who's like really 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 bad like someone who's like a war criminal mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. that he got what he did but not a 22 year old that they don't even know that literally is mm -hmm. just starting a job like that's mm -hmm. that's pure evil and, like, and I, you know what if someone on the conservative side starts making such a nonsense argument i see a lot of conservatives actually bashing that person and saying how dare you say that because this the, this does not represent us or our values so we do not want you to be somehow part of our uh, side because what you said is just totally dumb stupid and unacceptable and then a lot of people at that time made this point too that uh since uh oh, this uh, police officer could have been shot from a lot of uh, native born americans you know like a uh, white guy or this guy or that guy you know but every community each and every community and country in the world has good people and bad people okay so that's the whole point now you need to and they need to really understand this point every community and country in the world has good and bad people we do not need to import the bad people i mean how uh, how clear can this be we need to keep the bad people of the rest of the world away from us so we can deal with our own bad people it's just mm -hmm. like like saying oh since there are a lot of uh, there are overwhelmingly good major uh, overwhelmingly good people in pakistan but there are some terrorists over there too. So, but it's okay to, and then there are ter some terrorists in uh, in US too, you know, so like white supremacists or like our own homegrown terrorists over here. So uh, it's okay to bring the terrorists from Pakistan. It's okay to bring the terrorists from, from Middle East, or it's okay to bring the terrorists from other parts of the world since we have the terrorists over here. And yeah, overwhelming majority of them could be doctors, engineers, taxi drivers, or entrepreneurs, and all that stuff. But still, you know, we should not put any filter on that. We should just bring everybody here because you can keep on playing this nonsense card like overwhelming majority, overwhelming majority. But that overwhelming majority gets screwed up because of that minority who ends up coming over here and doing the wrong thing. And it shows their true agenda because I, I, two years mm -hmm. ago or three years mm -hmm. ago, I would have said the conservatives are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, overstating or whatever, or no, they're mm -hmm. exaggerating, but they really are anti-American because it's common sense. We have Absolutely. good and bad people here. Mm -hmm. We have good and bad people in Mexico. We have good and bad people in the Middle East, but we don't want to import mm -hmm. the bad people over there. They don't care about that because they hate America. They they just hate their own country. And I, I hate when people are like, oh, you're just, mm -hmm. no, look at what they're doing. They don't mm -hmm. care about content of character. They mm -hmm. don't care about cleaning up the streets of Los Angeles. They mm -hmm. don't care about cleaning up the streets of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. we, we have homelessness. We have small businesses fleeing the country. We, we mm -hmm. have clear issues. When you walk mm -hmm. around the streets, you don't see a utopia mm -hmm. of like prosperity. You literally see trash, mm -hmm. human feces, and hundreds of mm -hmm. thousands of people like passed mm -hmm. out on, on meth on the streets. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to act like there's only bad people. You only hate people in America and you're going to be silent. Like mm -hmm. how the woman's march is like mm -hmm. a PR, a PR team mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. of the, the biggest uh, human crises among women mm -hmm. in the world. Like, like you're going to align with a, a culture that mm -hmm. doesn't treat you like America treats you. Yeah. Yet you're going to hate on your dad. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Women's march. Uh, who's one of the leaders is the Linda Sarsour and, uh, Islamist, you know, and radical Islamist who is just uh, covering herself as, uh, as somehow who loves this country and otherwise her, if you look her uh, uh, like belief system, I mean, she loves the Sharia, which is like the Saudi version of Sharia, not like something which Muslims can say like as the way of living. I mean, Saudi version of uh, uh, Sharia and her mentor is Imam Siraj Wahaj. I mean, you need to look at this guy's uh, uh ideology and you will realize what sort of people they are really supporting and then uh, she's being supported by care which is another like uh, you can uh, people say uh, 
can make an argument like a uh, political wing of the Muslim Brotherhood over here. They have never criticized or uh, uh, con condemned Muslim Brotherhood or radical organizations as Hamas or uh, uh, Hezbollah and all this stuff. And they need to come out more uh, clearly about that. And then in this, and then I was so surprised to see like in one of the women's march, this uh, lady Ode, uh, O-D-E-H, that's her last name, who is a convicted terrorist was also one of the leaders and then when when people see these people being the voices of the muslim uh, community over here then that, that's what that puts all of us in trouble to uh, to somehow because uh, uh, they that really projects us or people perceive us like somehow all of us are like supporting uh, people like that i mean we absolutely have nothing to do with people like that or actually we are very staunch critics of people like that because they are the ones who are making us look bad they are the ones who are just just actually deceiving uh, people and uh, the entire uh, America, and then uh, and then liberals are just playing in their hands because they have their own Islamist supremacist agenda, and that's why they don't care if they because like you, if you remember when there was a uh, talk about like how many refugees uh, from Syria in the uh, at the peak of the crisis when ISIS was like really controlling the region and then was infiltrating these refugees. Uh, should be have brought over here these people were not really uh willing to uh, that much talk about like the vetting and the security in the background that they were like oh we should just bring all of them over here we should just bring as much as people over here and they feel very proud to bring as many people who just somehow align with their ideology but they don't care if what kind of people they come over here if they are the good ones or the bad ones are they going to make us look good are they going to make us look bad they just want all those people come over here as long as they fit their agenda and their narrative and i can tell you uh, that's what happens with any i mean right now i'm taking a big risk i'm already telling it and i'm, I'm gonna uh, putting it i'm already putting it out that uh, once people hear me speaking like that that uh, um uh being that outspoken and then very clearly criticizing uh what's happening on the left especially against the legal immigrant uh they will start again start making hit pieces against me i mean all of a sudden they will turn racist they will turn anti-legal immigrant and islamophobic and then at that time they won't even notice the irony that how uh, uh how they be, uh, they are what they keep on telling other people yeah and, and it's the craziest part about it because like for me mm -hmm. I, to each their own, if you don't bother me, mm -hmm. I don't care what you do. When it comes to Islamic countries, mm -hmm. it's not my issue. Like if they mm -hmm. want to, because I see the, I see the bad elements of liberalism mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you, that's like extremely conservative, mm -hmm. but it's like the, the goofiest part about it outside mm -hmm. of judgment of societies and how mm -hmm. it should run to me mm -hmm. is that liberals are like on the social scale, they're as far left as you can go shaving mm -hmm. off their hair. They got their, you know, the boobs <laughs> out and they're walking around just like, blah, 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 yeah. which is I'm not hating on it, do that, but mm -hmm. like, why is the far left social feminist, why are they uniting with what I wouldn't say like right wing mm -hmm. America, but like mm -hmm. on a social scale, extremely mm -hmm. far right wing people where like, you know, you come from a place where like they couldn't do that. So it's mm -hmm. like, it, it doesn't even mm -hmm. make sense regardless of what you want to like, mm -hmm. you, they don't like you, you know what I'm saying? In Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, Iran mm -hmm. or Saudi Arabia, they won't like the feminists and I, I don't understand why mm -hmm. they don't know that. It's like they, they, they're mm -hmm. not going to be your allies. They're not going to give you an Oscar award. They're not going to pat you on the back and tell mm -hmm. you to wear that. Like that's that's just not how it works there. Mm -hmm. And and the LGBTQ community, I'm like a huge supporter of the LGBTQ community. I have like gay friends who are raising kids and then they are like, uh, they got their kids through uh, surrogates, you know, and uh, I have been invited into their weddings. Uh, I've, so far, I've not been really able to make it, but I would love to. So these people are not welcome in uh, countries like Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, or like a lot of like uh, Muslim uh, countries over there. And then if you talk to people over like uh, American Muslims now are becoming more acceptable towards them. I mean, I'm seeing a change in trend, which is good, which is through like conversation talking. But like those people who just land over here from countries like that, and especially who not properly vetted and not properly uh, given enough time to assimilate over here. You think they're just gonna just land over here and start loving these people right away who they have been told to hate from the childhood? I mean, that is just totally unbelievable. And so I do not, so I actually do understand why it, uh, the liberal feminists and then the radical Islamists over here, they have an alliance. And then the simplest uh, explanation for that is the wokes. So Muslim community in America is one of the largest expanding and the fastest expanding communities in America. So it means like very soon, even right now, we have a pretty good voting power. And uh, 
Uh, and then you already see a lot of Muslim candidates, both from the left and the right, they are uh, contesting in the elections, which is very good. Uh, and then uh, that's another thing I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, but uh, the thing is like we are becoming a very significant voting block. So the, uh, uh, so the way to tap into that voting block and to take the maximum advantage of that is to align with people like that who are somehow uh, cl uh, blaming uh, these uh, uh, the the poor uh, white working class over here and calling them as uh, white supremacists and racists and bigots and neo nazis and all that and pretty much blaming them uh, with the same uh, brush which they hate when people do that to them you know so that they uh, they are somehow uh, saying that uh, we will bring you more voters because we will get the muslim vote uh, consolidated behind us and then uh, all you need to do is just like tender to our uh, ideology and tender to our, uh, our 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 ideas and then we will uh, somehow continue to keep the liberals in power and uh, we will just keep on blaming the other side uh, and then won't even show you our own hatred, which is hidden among us, towards the America, towards the Americans, and towards the different groups uh, like LGBTQ community, especially, which they uh, which they portray to be taking care of so much. They're both uh, obsessed with censorship too. Like now, the LGBT mm -hmm. feminist radical leftist mm -hmm. block and the Islamicist, although they don't agree mm -hmm. on maybe that much socially, they're mm -hmm. both obsessed. Like they they have this weird alliance where they're like, hey, if we both come mm -hmm. together, you let us push our agenda, we let you push your agenda, mm -hmm. and we censor everyone else out. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa. So it's a simple, like, so Linda Sarsour, I mean, she, her, she clearly came uh, into public and said, like, Imam Siraj Wahaj is her uh, mentor. I would want to know Imam Siraj Wahaj's stance on the LGBTQ community. I mean, what would he do if he is given the power <laughs> to rule this country? What will the fate of an LGBTQ in under his is uh, his Sharia law, okay, and until under his version of Sharia law. There are different versions of Sharia laws, okay? So under his version of Sharia laws. And I can bet you the answer will be so dooming for those uh, feminists and LGBTQ community that they'll be shocked, like, wow, like this is what these people actually want and that's the mm -hmm. way they want to treat us and, and we are supporting them. That is just totally mind blowing. And then this is the same lady who said that uh, we're gonna be, uh, uh, we should like uh, wage jihad against this White House uh, because it's uh, it's uh, it's it's, it's right now being controlled by white. I'm just paraphrasing. So it's controlled by the white supremacists and neo Nazis and all that stuff. Guess what? What happened after she used that word jihad? There was a Bangladeshi guy who did the uh, terrorism. There was a Uzbek guy who did the terrorism. There was a guy in San Francisco who they, actually, thank God, got uh, beforehand and foiled his plot of terrorism. I mean, you need to first tell our own community, our own Muslim community, that what jihad actually means, you know, because they keep on saying it's uh, the internal spiritual struggle. I totally understand. It, it, it is what it, it is, but it has different forms and shapes. There are different types of jihad. There are a lot of people in our community who, uh, I mean, not all, and then not overwhelming people, I mean, but a significant proportion in our community who can may or may take it in, in the wrong way. And then that's what they ended up doing. So why are you tapping or saying or using words like that against your own government, against your own country? And then uh, look at the outcomes. If, some, if they keep on saying Trump's rhetoric is the uh, is the whistle to the uh, is a dog whistle to these white supremacists and neo Nazis. Okay, so then Linda, Linda Sarsour's uh, rhetoric is also a dog whistle towards these terrorists, and they actually actually did what uh, you can uh, see from their from their actions. So uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are uh, going I mean a little too much towards this uh, uh, like uh, the Islamist uh, supremacy, but I think that will eventually link us and bring us back towards the illegal immigration. Uh, why uh, liberals support illegal immigration because that's part of these different supremacist supremacies going on within the uh, democratic uh, party and the in the liberal community because that's how they tap into the fears of these uh, uh, minorities because the the way they say like somehow the uh, the, uh, the white working class is uh, becoming racist towards them no actually you are turning racist towards them because all they are concerned is the uh, if the higher taxes the low wage growth the competition with the low illegal skill worker that's what they're concerned with they are not i mean i'm not saying like they are not racist among them there could be i mean genuine racist among them they are, they are definitely in every community but they're the overwhelming people uh, in uh, in their white working class is basically concerned about their livelihood that's what they're concerned about and if you're gonna just 
uh, totally ignore them just uh, be, uh, by calling them names, uh, then actually you are the one who are the racist one, and you hate it when people call you the same thing. So that's that's what it is. I, I wanna I wanna talk about your story and your family as well in a second, but I wanna mm -hmm. ask you a few more questions. I'm just curious. Um, I, I know in, in in Saudi Arabia, even in a lot of the Islamic world, there's a mm -hmm. slow but steady, I think, social revolution coming. It mm -hmm. seems like they're dialing back and people mm -hmm. are looking for more freedom. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, specifically in America, because you're someone who's like very real, you know, you put common sense and truth above above mm -hmm. all and then show love. But um, what percentage of Muslim Americans are conservative, do you think? And then what percentage of them like really appreciate mm -hmm. and love America? Because I've mm -hmm. met a lot of people in my personal life mm -hmm. that are like, you know, they, they love America. They appreciate it. They're not the radicals painted on TV. Mm -hmm. but there's also is like you said, there are you know the ones that get broadcasted and also inspire others but yeah mm -hmm. like what percentage do you think and and how do you think that could change so i mean it's hard to really uh, make any guesses uh, to say like uh, what percentage but i mean i am seeing a very uh, good attitude uh, to, in the muslim community like a lot of people are really realizing that uh, uh, how blessed they are to be here in this country and then they have to be faithful uh, towards this country, loyal towards this country, and then uh, call out the bad elements within our within our society. I mean, we don't have any sort of a proper uh, um, uh, proper poll within our community. I mean, there has been only one uh, conducted so far sent by Center of Security Policy, and that was, I think, a while ago. And then that's not really that authentic. So I'm not really I'm going to quote that uh, poll, but I'm I'm already putting this disclosure that uh, it's it's probably not that authentic. But according to them, almost 25 American Muslims, 25 percent, 25 percent of American Muslims, they want uh, Sharia law uh, over American Constitution. So I'm first of all, I'm not really sure what uh, in which way that question was posed to them, uh, and then what because every muslim has uh, is on his or her own interpretation of sharia law okay so what do they really want or mean by the sh sharia law but uh, a lot of people that i've talked to about they have clearly said that uh, they uh, want to live under american constitution and uh, and they are very happy with that and they don't want to uh, uh, they don't want to have anything to do with the sharia law because uh, they are uh, very happy under the constitution and when they are living over here uh, that makes a part of their own belief system that uh, to follow the laws and the regulation of the country and and follow the constitution of the country so i i think the uh, american uh, muslim community is uh, really uh, has uh, made good progress towards uh, showing that uh, they are uh, uh, they are pretty much uh, very much in love with this country and they will continue to do that but one thing i just want to tell them is that a lot of parents that i've seen uh, is that they actually are the ones who keep on making their children pretty confused so like if uh, uh, when the mom and dad are from let's suppose from pakistan or from india and then that actually goes uh, with a lot of other Im immigrant community as well so they continuously want to somehow um, implant this uh, thing into their kids that uh, you are actually a Pakistani or you're actually an Indian and you're actually a Bangladeshi, you know, and then you will never be accepted over here. You will always be a second class citizen. And then the kids, they, they get more confused from somebody else i mean if somebody else tells us this thing like you don't belong here or you go back to your country we will immediately take no time to believe that person as white supremacists or this supremacists or that supremacists mm -hmm. but on the other hand we are the uh, ones ourselves who keep on telling our kids that oh you are uh, never going to be accepted as the first class citizen or you are actually a pakistani or you're actually uh, uh, from uh, from where we have come from so mm -hmm. you need to tell your own kids like you are american first which a lot of parents are doing but still i see like that's where they need to work on yeah that you are american first you're born here this is the only country you know and then you are anybody else uh, since your parents are from there and you still should be proud of both of your heritages yeah i, I wouldn't doubt that that that's not happening because if you look at even american parents like mm -hmm. the liberal communist kid like i mean these parents are terrible so if it's happening by the millions in our own country Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure other ethnicities are doing that as well. And it, it all comes down. I, I always hate to blame, but it does come down to like leftism because it's like mm -hmm. regardless of race, religion, gender, mm -hmm. if you're American, that's what mm -hmm. unites us all. But they hate that. So exactly. it's like they tell I see Asian communist parents being like, mm -hmm. hate white people. I'm like, your kid's five years old. So mm -hmm. it's just it's just bad parenting and bad guidance.
Mm -hmm. They that's, just that's assume. They, so that's what I'm saying. Like this is a huge hypocrisy on their behalf when they say like, oh, white people are this, white people are that, you know, and uh, basically painting them with the same brush. And when uh, someone who's white does exactly the same thing towards them, then they hate it. Like, oh, not all of us are like that. A lot of us are peaceful and love America. So then why are you using the same thing? And you're absolutely right. The only thing that unites us is the love to this country, which is like our, our constitution, our flag, and our army, our veterans. I mean, these are the, the people, and then these are the things that you really need to respect from the core of your heart. Because uh, when that whole uh, stupid uh, fl flag and anthem controversy uh, arose in the past uh, related to Colin Kaepernick, I made a video, and then I, I really appreciate that you uh, spread the message, and it went pretty viral. And even though Facebook uh, removed that, because obviously Facebook uh, hated uh, they, they removed it? They removed they, that? They, they, they didn't remove, I think, from your channel, but they removed from a lot of other channels, and especially uh, one channel picked it up. Uh, I mean, one uh, Facebook page picked it up, and then it went pretty viral, like almost somewhere two to three million views on that. And then they removed the oh whole my. page down. They're so probably, that, that's, it's like they always say, right, you're, you're removing mm -hmm. the message mm -hmm. of someone who's brown playing their games. Like, oh, we love right. these people. Just don't love the country or we're going to remove. Like, exactly. Who, who are you really? They, they would crazy. hate me. They would hate me for loving this country. That's the, that's, that's the biggest yeah, hypocrisy. And then that's the biggest racism, bigotry you can see from the left. I mean, not again, all left, a lot of left, that they would he hate a legal immigrant loving this country because it means we do not fall into their same agenda of hating this country and somehow tapping in, in, uh, into the uh, fear mongering that, oh, you know what, there's going to be a bad white man or bad orange man coming after you. And then we are the ones who are going to protect you. And then you need to side with us. Otherwise, you have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I mean, that is nonsense. You are the ones who are actually have done nothing for our communities, have done nothing to help us out uh, and then uh, solve the problems. And you're the ones who are aligning with these radicals who we are actually all trying to run away from and actually want to confront. So how the hell you are protecting me or my uh, community or my society? I mean, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, I want to. We're going to get into your family story and stuff. First mm -hmm. off, I want to say one thing that I noticed. I know a lot of people who are legal immigrants. Mm -hmm. They say that the process needs to be streamlined better. And I, I know you feel that way as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the thing I've noticed about you, uh, I mm -hmm. talked to someone, like I said, from Iran. I actually mm -hmm. know two people from Iran. They mm -hmm. love this country actually mm -hmm. more than like little communist liberal kids in America mm -hmm. born here. Because mm -hmm. if you come legally, mm -hmm. you wanna you want to come. Mm -hmm. You will pay the price mm -hmm. financially. You'll pay mm -hmm. the price time-wise and life-wise. It's a huge mm -hmm. sacrifice to come here. So if you mm -hmm. spend all that time and money to get here, chances are you're going to actually like the country. Very few people mm -hmm. actually spend that time to come here and hate it. But mm -hmm. if you come here illegally, it's kind of mm -hmm. like parenting. A lot of like the mm -hmm. liberal mentality comes from mm -hmm. being handed everything. You got Uber mm -hmm. Eats. You can So you don't appreciate mm -hmm. anything. You know, there's mm -hmm. the lack of appreciation. So... Mm -hmm. I, I like that with legal immigration that you actually do appreciate it illegal, not so much, but some people do, but it, it, it's easier not to when you mm -hmm. get handed everything. Mm -hmm. What's going on with your, your family? Because I know we talked about it. I want people to mm -hmm. hear too, because it, it's not easy for good mm -hmm. people to get here, not from Canada, mm -hmm. not from Pakistan. And it mm -hmm. shouldn't be easy for just anyone to get here when there's really great people mm -hmm. who are having trouble seeing their mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, like, tell me what's going on with your your family. Yeah. So actually, last year was very tough and hard for me and my family, and uh, I had to face with the biggest, biggest tragedy uh, ever in my life. So my youngest brother, uh, who was only 34 years old, uh, he passed away in a car accident, uh, and it was such a huge shock that uh, I'm still suffering from it emotionally. There's no way, I mean, uh, there will be any recovery. I mean, I just have to live with that. So he left behind um, my young niece, who is now almost one year old, and then my young sister-in-law, and then I have my uh, sister. So my parents passed away uh, a while ago. So uh, we were a very small family to begin with, and now we are even smaller. So now my, me and my sister are the only immediate blood relative left. Uh, we don't have any other immediate blood relative. I have family here. I have family back home, uh, very nice people, uh, very supportive. They really... Uh, came along together to help us out uh, but the thing is like I really want to be with my family and all the time and as much as I want uh, 
the biggest problem in that is that the, the immigration system. So <clears throat> I do not mind people staying in line, waiting for their turns, as long as all of us are being treated the same, not the way the, the racist li liberal elite treat different races differently. So I want them to really work on uh, expediting the process of legal immigration. So uh, in regards to my sister's story, like she's a pharmacist. She came over here, uh, stayed here legally all the time for five years. So she stayed here legally. We made sure that not even for a single day she became uh, illegal or did anything which was illegal. And as, same as I, same as my wife who's from Philippines. So every buddy uh, made sure that we follow the laws and the regulations so she and she's a pharmacist so she cleared her exams uh, and became uh, the registered uh, pharmacist in the state of illinois and i'm so proud of her uh, she worked very hard for that uh, so all she needed was uh, an employer uh, which were, we were lucky to find one and uh, that uh, guy uh, so sponsored her twice uh, and uh, for the H-1B working visa. Uh, but the, the difference between my H-1B working visa and hers was that uh, her was uh, uh, had to go through the lottery system uh, because it was capped. Uh, the category was capped for the pharmacist because it's uh, there are already a lot of American grads uh, who are coming out and they are taking the uh the uh, spots and they are being uh, preferred so i mean i cannot blame uh, or call them racist because of that i mean that's <laughs> the, the way it is so she uh, uh was sponsored by this uh, uh, sponsored twice but unfortunately because of this broken uh, immigration system the lottery system her name did not get picked up because it's like people applying for h1b visa they put their applications in the same pot and then uh, the people who are deciding who's going to be coming in and not, they just randomly pick it up. And uh, they do not even care about the qualifications or the merit. So uh, you could be a doctor of pharmacy on the top on the top of your list. And uh, you can be uh, uh, you, you can be chosen over uh, some like dog catcher. I'm not like really saying really a dog catcher, but like someone who is uh, having low credentials than you. But uh, th that was so unfortunate. For us and uh, very disappointing uh, that uh, and then with, and then this tragedy happened that she had no choice but to go back because she has already tried so hard over here so now i am trying to get her over here i mean i'm separated from my family and then people would make this nonsense argument like oh she's not being oppressed over there she's not suffering or this and that i mean uh, how the hell would you know i mean how the hell would you know like the people coming from over the border they are being really oppressed or that they are really who they are or what they're claiming to at least you know our story or our background because we disclose everything we came through the proper channel that's why you can make that argument that you are not that oppressed or you're not that uh, the, uh, or you're not being uh, 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 being suppressed the bottom line is like i want to be with my family with my sister and even preferably my niece and my sister-in-law but i cannot because of this uh, broken immigration system and then if i sponsor my uh, my sister right now through the uh, chain uh, migration it will take at least 10 to 12 years like more than a decade for her to come through that route and then you're telling me like somehow these people who do not even have any authenticity to tell us who they are and where they're coming from can just barge into the border with the, you know, with whatever relatives they have or they don't even have and then claim uh, and, and claim uh, citizenship status or claim like immigration status i mean that is just totally ridiculous and again i that's why i keep on calling it as racism because this really uh, treats uh, people coming from our side of the country or our side of the world and from the some other parts of the world totally different and as long as they fit their liberal agenda they will be welcoming them and then there will be nobody who gives a who cares or gives a damn about my family so that's 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 just true and then and the and the biggest thing is that i even asked my liberal friends about that like, what do you feel about my family what would you want me to do i have either the uh, two choices to continue to work and struggle uh, to bring them here legally or i can also make them come here illegally like can make them come over here and then overstay their visa i mean i'm i'm not even saying like they're gonna come and cross the border because border is somehow very dangerous and then everybody knows that and then and and then at that time they will be saying like oh you know you know you should not make them come through the border because border is very dangerous there are a lot mm. of bad people at the border so immediately immediately they will switch and they will say oh border is very bad and dangerous you should not bring your family from there and then i'm like yes so that's exactly what it is we should not bring people from the border and then what do you suggest if i make my family come here on visitor visas and make them illegal and stay them 
and make them stay uh, uh, for a long period of time, make them hide. And then if somebody touches them, I would start uh, screaming on the top of my lung as racism, bigotry, and Islamophobia, and this phobia, that phobia. How about that? And they'll be like, oh, no, you know what? This is not right because that will just add some more illegals on, on, on the, uh, in, 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 into the population. And I'm like, okay, so those people who are on DACA kids, you know, who are uh, somehow coming over here and then stayed here illegally, they're okay, they're okay to stay and they, you're okay to get the status. And everybody is sympathizing for them, but nobody is sympathizing at all or giving a damn about my family. I mean, how hypocritic and bigoted is, this is. I mean, this is like two totally separate and different standards because right now I can bring my niece on visitor's visa and make her stay here illegally and down the road if someone tries to touch her I would say the same thing like this is the only country that she knows this is the only country she has ever been there's a uh, uh, it's not her fault it's, it's the fault of her parents or it's my fault you know it's anybody else's fault but her fault so make her stay here illegally so this is, uh, but we are not going to do that because we are law abiding citizens. We are going to practice what we preach. So we want the legal immigration system to be fixed and uh, expedited rather than the illegal immigration given that much importance. So, so this is what is happening. Like the liberals hate legal immigrants. They do not propose or pass any law expediting or focusing more on legal immigration, but they want to put all their efforts energy towards the illegal immigration because when illegal immigrants come over here they owe everything to the liberals they overwhelmingly vote for them they are their future blocks voting blocks and then the legal immigrant can come over here who does not owe anyone anything and decide on his or her own which party he's going to vote for and that's what it really comes down to if somehow miraculously illegal start voting for the Republican Party, or they would just say, we're not going to come over here and vote for anybody. And that, that's why the uh, whenever you make an argument like, uh, uh, we're not going to, we're going to keep them here, but we're not going to give them any legal status to vote, you know, immediately all the humanity just goes down the drain by, uh, by these uh, liberals. They will say the very first thing we want for them is to give them this legal status so they can vote, so they can vote, so they can vote. They are just focused on vote. They have nothing to do with humanity. They have nothing to do with what they're suffering. Because if you tell me that they have anything to do with their suffering, what about the suffering of our own people over here? The people that you mentioned in LA, in San Francisco are veterans who are literally dying on the streets. Nobody gives a damn about them. So if you tell me somehow that those people who, like I care for those people, some strangers from some another part of the world, they are the one we should be caring of and then we should somehow ignore and do not care of the people of our own people that tells me that you hate your own country you hate your own people and you are either fully uh, aware of that or you are just so ignorant and dumb that you cannot even realize that because right now so, sorry i'm just gonna finish like mm -hmm. I, I said, like for me right now the biggest priority is to take care of my own family if i'm not going to take care of my own family especially when they are living like uh, on their own and they have they have uh, hardly anyone to take care of them so and, and then i start taking care of the rest of the world you'd be like what are you doing because i mean you have your own family you have three young females in your own family who have no uh, supervision they need to be taken uh, care of first and you need to uh, be giving them priority and then you're going out there saving the rest of the world i mean that does not uh, that's just that's just totally stupid and then that basically ultimately comes down to maybe I don't love my family that much and I kind of probably hate them and I love those other people who somehow I find a connection absolutely yeah you tapped into something too and it's tough trying to get people to figure this out I know you have such a real life experience that that you're hyped up about it but it's like they don't actually care about Mexicans or Hispanic people. They just want their agenda and they don't votes. actually, they votes. don't have votes, votes in their agenda and they don't have a valid argument to make. Like I don't mm. need, I could, I could say this and that mm. I could bring you on, bring other people on, but I mm -hmm. can logically create my argument with simple mm. logic that transcends race, religion and gender. Mm. And it'll be right. They don't, they can't do that. They can't mm. do that. So they have to hide behind races. And, you know, you, you talk about your story. I want to get into that in a second. But um, 
like India, the, 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 the country of India, it's huge. And like, I have Indian friends that are Hindu. I've learned there's a whole history there. Like they never talk about Indians. They don't care about that, that whole thing. Middle East, Middle East, they totally misframe. Hispanics they use, blacks they use, unless they, they, they fight for their people, then they hate them. And then like Asians, like not only do they not talk about China, what's going on there very accurately, but they low key hate Asians like white people now where it's like, oh, you can't do this because of where you're from, East Asians and stuff. It's all really racist. It's all mm-hmm. really backwards. And mm-hmm. they, they continuously, I, I want to wake people up, regardless of your racial, religion, mm-hmm. gender, because they mm-hmm. just use you mm-hmm. as like a shield to mm-hmm. push their agenda of communism. And communism is not mm-hmm. freedom for people who are brown or black or Hispanic. Communism is the government and the state controlling Absolutely. all of the money, you know, giving you little crumbs here and there. So the mm-hmm. next time you look up, you have absolutely nothing and i want to say real quick i'm throw back to you mm-hmm. what wakas was talking about after his, his story was um or, or the entire story it's mm-hmm. what trump actually talks about a lot i didn't understand it fully until i sat down with wakas last week and he told me what was going on with his sister mm-hmm. the lottery program we used to do at a certain point merit-based programs trump said this mm-hmm. a lot who are people who are these mm-hmm. people are they qualified if she's the top uh pharmacist mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. top doctor and we mm-hmm. need pharmacists and doctors mm-hmm. then she gets to come here but a- mm-hmm. along the way i don't know who put this stuff into place mm-hmm. they do a lottery based program mm-hmm. think logically i don't care mm-hmm. if you're liberal or conservative mm-hmm. if someone's hiring someone for a job are they going to mm-hmm. just roll the dice and be like oh i chose him over anomaly and cost like what was he better than this that's fine i don't <laughs> care who he is but like mm-hmm. no he, we just did because like mm-hmm. it's a lottery like they're playing mm-hmm. bingo with mm-hmm. citizens it's absolutely yep. insane so like the reason that his sister can't come it's mm-hmm. not because she's not qualified it's not because mm-hmm. she's not safe and well mm-hmm. vetted she's not going to harm a fly mm-hmm. it's because they they just roll the dice and then mm-hmm. someone who's potentially a lot crappier than her will mm-hmm. get a, a citizenship first it, it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense and then trump says this stuff and they say oh my god that's a racist mm-hmm. it's, how, mm-hmm. it's basic like everything he says is mm-hmm. basic common sense mm-hmm. it's actually it's not racist at all it's actually uh, so you are basically basing your immigration status on a merit base and a lot of um people like colored people from all different parts of the world from africa from middle east from south asia from southeast asia they will be able to come here quicker much quicker based on merit-based system rather than going through the lottery system or going through the chain immigration or uh, migration system because that has a much longer waiting period of time and then uh, those people who are coming over here illegally they're abusing our system they are overburdening our system and the resources are going over there rather than going towards the expedition of exp- uh, expediting the legal immigration system so that's why i'm telling you that the legal uh, the the liberal agenda is so racist they have absolutely nothing uh, no sympathy for the legal immigrants based on already one example that i gave you that uh, the police officer who died i never heard any liberal leader giving him any two cents of sympathy uh, and then same thing goes with the uh, le- uh, the legal immigration from these uh, countries who have overwhelmingly uh, colored people and then this guy Jim Acosta from CNN who is another racist basically who said that uh, so if we're gonna make this system uh, uh, legal then uh, it means like only people from UK and Australia will be coming over here I mean he absolutely has does not any idea how many people from these uh, third world can speak English and much better English than him and kick his butt by speaking English in front of him I mean this guy and then uh, uh, so, so like so so many other people uh, in the liberal media they keep on just refusing to accept that merit-based system will help more immigrants and colored immigrants to come over here and i am not really saying i want only colored immigrants i don't even care from where they are coming from or what color they are i just want all of them to be treated uh, simply the same way so the the thing is uh, with the uh, illegal immigration that that takes a huge toll on the legal immigration and uh, if we can the, the our courts are overburdened with that our uh, legal immigration uh, administration and officials are overburdened with that if somehow just imagine there is no illegal immigration and everybody knows that this is the way to come in over here this is the legal way to come in over here and everybody applies through that and we do not have any resources to waste in the illegal immigration and all the resources are focused only in legal immigration then we will be seeing far far better results of ex- of uh, expediting the legal immigration and going through that much quicker
Absolutely. And I, I want to just wrap it up. I'm going to let you say one last thing, but you got to understand, well, Khan, a patriot, he's a doctor as well. Good guy. He's super heated about this stuff, much so more than me, because it affects him directly. He had to pay a lot of money to get here. He had to wait a lot of time. He yeah. follows the rules, you know, had a family tragedy, has has family members who are more than qualified to come here, mm -hmm. who will not be able to come here, not because they're not good people, not because they're going to make America worse or anything, simply because of the liberal agenda where they prioritize people who will make America worse at a very rapid rate over people who are qualified, <coughs> whether they're from Mexico, Pakistan or others. Our, our system makes absolutely no sense. Illegal immigration is not the same as legal immigration. It, it, they, they are lying about it. And that's if people are liberal, it's OK to, to not like certain mm -hmm. things that Trump says, but it's not OK to lie. It really mm -hmm. isn't. And the fact that they've lied all years and they, mm -hmm. they act like they don't know the difference mm -hmm. between. Le oh, you hate all immigrants. No, here's a story of an immigrant, a legal immigrant, one of those ones mm -hmm. that they say they fight for. They they say, oh, no, we love. Pakistani and Middle Eastern immigrants more than you do. Okay, then why don't you listen to my friend Wakas Khan and the millions of people just like him that I, I don't talk to millions, but I talk to a lot of people all the mm -hmm. time. And these are stories that need to get out there. And I'm going to do more stuff mm -hmm. with, with people who have a story to tell that just won't get mm -hmm. on the news. So thank mm -hmm. you for coming. I'll give you the floor to say whatever you want for as long as you want. But God bless <laughs> you, brother. Uh, good luck with all that process. I'll see you again. We'll work on some stuff soon. And thank you for sharing your very real American story that otherwise would never be told. Thank you. I mean, uh, it's just amazing, like how time flies with you talking to you uh, and then uh, having this uh, great discussion and debate. Uh, like uh, there are so many things I want to say and what I will try to summarize. And uh, uh, while doing so, I will try to debunk so many myths that have been put out there by the liberal media about uh, the, both legal and illegal immigrants. So first of all, to tell my s story, uh, I mean, I need to go back a little, a little bit to tell you that my father uh, was not a very rich man. I mean, he really worked extremely hard to not only bring himself uh, up from you can say lower class to lower middle class to middle class and i think we never made beyond that i mean that's uh, what we are from in in pakistan but that was a slow process very hard process and then that's the, these are the same qualities of hard work uh, that he instilled in me and the rest of his kids so but even after working all of his life by the time he sent me to go to america he told me very clearly, you have once in a lifetime opportunity because I do not have enough resources to uh, keep on giving you over and over again. So he gave me half of his entire life's retirement savings to put uh, over here uh, in my venture to come to uh, America. So, and he told me very clearly, if you make it great, if you cannot make it, just come home uh, and there's no uh, further expectations from me. And I said, okay, let's make it a deal. And then he uh, gave me that as a loan. Uh, which I returned and, and thank God I returned in his lifetime, which I'm very proud of. So he uh, uh, sent me over here taking an extreme risk of uh, giving half of his uh, life uh, savings. And I know stories of people who ha I have tried uh, to help myself who came over here. Their parents have sold things. Their parents have actually uh, loaned money from other people to send their kids over here. And sometimes they're able to make it. They're not able to make it. But I'm trying to tell you like how hard and expensive the legal process is, which you guys, the liberals, are taking as a freaking joke. So they need to understand that uh, we have worse and worse stories than me. I mean, I'm not really one of the worst story or example out there. I have plenty of worse stories out there. I have people who have extremely oppressed over there and actually been persecuted. And you can really find out about them because they come out and go through the proper pathway. But they, what they have to do, they have to wait. They have to wait uh, by holding their lives in their hands till they get approved and then finally get accepted. They do not cross uh, the border. They do not. Do not barge into the country and then talking about this thing that oh somehow this is at uh, uh like uh, the uh, south uh, the people coming from the south they do it because it's in proximity nowadays proximity is uh, not really one of the pro uh, problems uh, at all you can bring people through air you can bring people through land you can bring people through ocean i mean uh, if we want to we have enough resources over here we can get uh, like our community can get enough resources over here to bring millions and millions of our people because we have much more populated uh, region 
uh, in South Asia to bring millions of people who can claim to be oppressed and suppressed and uh, and deserving uh, through ships and through boats and then really flood uh, the southern border. But we do not do that. The main reason is that we are, first of all, law-abiding, America-loving citizens who want to follow the rules and regulation. Second, we are not supremacists like them. We I have no uh, intentions of, for for the dominance of my race. I have no intentions for the influence of my race. Because if someone who is white thinks that, he's a white supremacist. If he's someone who is a Hispanic who wants the influence and domination of his race, he's a Hispanic supremacist. And if someone who is an Islamist who wants the domination of Islamic uh, or their version of a radical Islamic ideology in the world or anywhere, they are the Islamic supremacists. So we are not supremacists, but somehow these people, the liberals, they are aligning with all these these different type of supremacists to uh, to forward their agenda. So when uh, so that's one thing. Like uh, how it was tough and expensive for me and millions, millions of other people to come over here, and even, even up till now. So the legal immigrants and illegal immigrants all are very hardworking. Okay, there's there's no doubt about that. But to say that somehow Americans are not hardworking, that's why we need to bring the legal and illegal immigrants over here to do the dirty jobs that the Americans they don't want to do. That is total bullcrap. This is the biggest bullcrap, and this is the biggest bigoted comment that I've heard. Uh, when I was in uh, Illinois and in Midwest, and it was like one of the most conservative and the reddest uh, counties uh, over there, uh, in which like uh, there's hardly any. Um, uh, any uh, any uh, candidate from uh, the Democrat side who would be uh, standing in the general uh, election. I mean, whoever wins in the primary on the conservative side is basically going to win automatically. So that's how red it was. When I was there, my lawnmower was a white guy. My my land, my housekeeping lady, my house cleaning lady was a white lady. And both of them did superb job, extremely good, best job they can do just like anybody else. The only difference was that they were charging a little more. They were charging a market rate. And what I could have done, I could have fired them, hired an illegal, take take away the jobs from them, and make them uh, and and make them basically jobless. So there are so many conflicting studies out there saying like, oh, illegals contribute so much to the society by paying the taxes, uh, by doing the jobs that the people they don't want to do. I mean. Uh, there are so many conflicting studies out there, so you can find uh, whatever study you want with whatever agenda you support, but the way you can really sort it out for yourself is by using common sense. So this is my basic household example, that white people working for a colored legal immigrant at the market rate who could have fired them and hired illegal immigrants by taking away their jobs and, and making the illegals work for, for him at a cheaper rate. And this is what they have been crying about, that when low waste uh, and low skilled workers come over here to this country, even though they are hardworking or not hardworking, they take away middle America's or uh, the low skill uh, workers' job. And then when you come, when you talk about like hard work, and then the, the people over here they don't work hard, which is a very bigoted uh, statement. Like the white people or the American the middle or middle America does not work hard. That is extremely white, uh, bigoted statement because I've seen them doing all sort of jobs. Uh, the, the these same legal or illegal immigrants had uh, were not given or offered the same opportunities of the same hard work that they were doing in their own home countries. So you think the uh, a total lazy bum who who just somehow entered America started working his butt off right away? No, he was a hard worker in wherever he came from, and he is a hard worker here in America as well. But why the hell would he come to America? Because America offers. The, our constitution offers the uh, the freedom. There's no discrimination because they're based on race, ethnicity, and religion. And then also it gives you the equal opportunities, merit-based opportunities, which no other country provides the way America does. That's why you come over here and when you work hard, you can be whoever the hell you want. And then uh, the other thing is like they contribute by paying taxes. Okay, so first of all, you contribute by uh, you have already come here illegally. That's one uh, uh, crime. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, and they keep on labeling it a civil crime. It's like a misdemeanor, uh, which is which uh, a legal immigrant has not done at all. So do not put them, put or lump us together in the same pool. So when you come over here illegally, first of all, first of all, you have broken the law. Next thing, you are ready, take social security, take uh, uh, documentation, and then you're paying your taxes, but then you're paying your taxes, which are based on the lower income that you are making compared to an American citizen or legal immigrant who would have made higher income and paid higher taxes. 
Then you, when you come over here, you just do not settle right away. You go to the hospitals, you get the uh, free healthcare over there. You go to the uh, schools, uh, get the kids administered over there, get free education over there. And, and then this is the way there are a lot of resources that have been taken away from the Americans to the illegals. And then uh, this thing, which I want to debunk again, like uh, people saying that illegals, uh, sorry, the, the immigrants commit less crime than the, uh, the, than the Americans. So there are again conflicting studies about that. Some studies they show that that could be true and uh, some studies they show that that could be false. But if you take away the, separate the legal and illegal immigrants, altogether legal immigrants commit the least crime than the native born, then could be possibly the native born um, committing the, uh, 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 sorry, then then could be the na native born uh, uh, like committing crimes and versus the uh, illegal ones. But legal immigrants do not, uh, are at the bottom of committing any sort of violent crime. So this is a hard facts that you need to accept. So legal immigration is the safest way to go. So, and then again, to come back to my point, you should not, bring bad people from all over the world you should only import the good people because we have our own bad people to take care of there's no justification to bring bad people just saying because we have our own bad people so just bring more bad people and then coming back uh, and the last point to make about the wall and border security i have personally talked to u.s border patrol agents who have come uh, uh who i got uh, got a chance to meet when they were dropping illegals to be treated and they clearly said and these are the main experts not the media pundits not the cnn and msnbc these are the real uh, experts who are on board uh, who, who are on the on the site on the battleground who are saying we need the wall and there's no way around it and they don't need like a great wall of us they just basically need strategic wall uh, or physical barriers so they can patrol the rest of the area and make sure that there's no illegal crossing over there so we need to, we need to listen to the experts it's just like if you're a doctor if you're an engineer you need to listen to the expert when uh, because they have spent their life to earn that degree and democrats supported all that in the past if you listen to obama's speech if you listen to bill clinton's speech if you listen to chuck schumer's speech but then they all turned against that just because of trump because they hate trump so much they don't care that if they start hating america with that as well absolutely well well Kass, thank you for joining me this is not the last you'll see of him we're going to do some more stuff together try to get some effective stuff out there and really <laughs> summon and give light to the voices of the millions upon tens of millions of immigrants who get drowned out and lied about by the mainstream media. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoy Make America Debate again. We'll be back very soon with another Thank podcast. You so. Thank you so much for having me. And have Anytime. a great rest of the weekend. We're going to do some more high quality mm -hmm. stuff. So Make yeah. America Debate again episode. I'm not even sure. Look at the look at the Apple podcast thing. See you guys.